Hello everyone, welcome back to my weekend updates. I know it's been a while since my last video, so let me catch you up on what has been added to my voxel project since the last time you guys saw it. Probably the most clickbaity thing is the fact that there's global illumination now. Um, so if I were to place a uh, set of emissive voxels right here, you can see that the, the area lights up. And if I go closer, um, you're able to see that there's also auto exposure. So now that this emissive surface, which you can see is also textured, is taking up a large portion of the screen, the camera is adjusting in order to uh, be able to expose the voxels that are there correctly. Um, and another thing that has been added, so as I break these, you can see that the, the surface of the voxels is pretty smooth, and that's because each voxel actually also stores a normal vector to get a nice surface shading as opposed to just the harsh faces. Um, currently, there are only eight bits. Uh, the normals are compressed octahedral. There's only eight bits per normal. So you can very clearly see the, the stepping in between the, the compression of the normals. I am going to change that. They are no longer going to be 8-bit, I'm going to go with 16 or even 24-bit, so <clears throat> uh, that's that's something for the future. Another thing is that the resolution right now is, even though the screen is 1440p, I'm actually running at 1080p because I have the resolution scale down. I can change this resolution scale to whatever I like, um, but on top of that, if I put it at something more reasonable like 1080p, um, I can switch to a uh, temporal super sampling method, um, which, which makes the image a higher quality. Um, so I can choose between FSR2 and a custom hand-rolled version from a library called Kajia. Kajia is a project that's written in Rust that I actually ported from Rust and HLSL to C++ and GLSL in order to integrate it into my project. Um, so the global illumination, as well as this TAA method, are, are both from the Kajia codebase. <clears throat> now, another really, really awesome thing that the engine has is a procedural sky that is rendered um, physically accurate. So um, <clears throat> if I bring the sun down, you can see that the, the atmosphere appears to uh, change, change color based on the sun direction, of course. Um, but even more interesting is the the shadow that the that the planet quote unquote casts in the atmosphere so if i go down a little bit further you can start to see this shadow emerge on the opposing side and because i have global illumination you can see i can place down these these lights and the, the terrain around them gets lit now, it's very noisy, which is something I need to fix, but again, that's something for the future. Now, if I set the player's movement speed to be really something really high, um, I can fly straight up, and you can see that there's actually a planet-scale atmosphere around the planet. Um, as well as stars. There's no bloom yet, which I really want to add. As you can see, the sun is just this white circle, basically. It's not actually just white, I don't believe, um, but it's pretty dang close to it because um, that's how the sun looks in from space.
<clears throat> if I go back to the planet surface and I fly in a straight line at a fast speed again, then you can see I eventually leave the planet surface and the terrain continues to generate. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's also infinite uh, chunks now, infinite um, world generation. And um, as I start to get out at this distance, you can see the, uh, the precision in, in the, the brushes starts to, to fall very greatly, which, which is sad. Um, I just wanted to show one last thing, which is that I have this, this debug, um, this, I have this debug, um, menu, which allows me to render, uh, to the screen, the different passes that I perform. So there's the normals, there's the velocity buffer, which, uh, you can see changes when I move. Um, there's the shadow map, there's a reprojection map, and so many more that are used in order to um, render the final image. I also wanted to say, I, I wanted to update you all on why there hasn't been an update video in such a long time. The reason being is that if I'm being honest, I have not been motivated at all to make videos, even though writing code is my, my hobby. It's really difficult to balance my day job with developing my personal project alongside making videos about the personal project. And then my actual like day to day life, if you can say, I don't really have a life. Um, all I do is code. Um, but, but like, I need to find time to make food for myself. I need to find time to actually sleep. Um, so balancing all of this is, is not really that easy. And so finding the motivation to make a video over trying to make a new feature, um, it's, it's really, it's just, it's not there. So I will be making videos like occasionally, but I don't really want to have a schedule anymore because it's, it's too much of a, a burden. Um, however, I do want to say that I have been posting a bunch of unlisted videos that are about, um, that are basically like little showcases with no commentary of, of what I've been working on recently. And so um, I have a bunch of unlisted videos that have always been in a public playlist for anyone to see, as well as they're uh, linked in my Discord. Um, but I've decided to actually make all of these videos public um, with a border around them so that it's clear that they're not the normal, like, commentary style videos that I make, but instead just little showcases that are probably less than a minute long that just show whatever I'm, I've been working on recently. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you guys soon.